So Florian, come on up and show us. Good morning. Um, let me set up my laptop quickly. Okay, so I'm going to talk about the service mantra and what the service mantra is and uh, how we use it at SAP. Um, so we have uh, the, the simple scenario here, like Cloud Foundry is talking to a service broker, right? It's simple, that's the open service broker A, API, nothing special. So let's add another service broker to the picture. Well, nothing really changes, it's the same API, it's still manageable, everything is fine. Mm, let's add Kubernetes to the picture. Also not a big problem because it uses the same API, it's the Open Service Broker API. Um, so um, the service cataloging in Kubernetes can use the same brokers, no problem. So now let's add a few more platforms to the game. So when we're talking about the SAP Cloud Platform, well, we have thousands of Kubernetes and um, Cloud Foundry instances running. So here are just a few on the slide. Um, now let's add a few more service brokers to it. Well, uh, at SAP, we run hundreds of services. Now let's connect them all together. It's a mess, right? Um, it's not just a mess on the slide, it's also a real mess in reality. So we need, uh, we need to find a solution to, to manage this mess. And the solution that we came up with is uh, called the service manager. The service manager will become a central component of the SAP Cloud Platform. Um, so uh, platforms will be registered at the service manager and brokers will be registered at the service manager. So whenever we add a new platform to the, to the, service, um, yeah, to the SAP Cloud Platform, we will register at the service manager, and the service manager will know which brokers have to be registered there. So the, the author of the service and the service broker doesn't need to know what's actually going on. The service manager will have its policies, and based on these policies, it will decide which broker goes where. Uh, the same is true for the service broker. So when, the service, uh, when we have a new service broker, a new service, um, we, manage, uh, we add it to the service manager, and the service manager will then um, distribute this registration um, to whatever platform we think it has to go. Uh, on the way, we can also apply policies like, well, the service broker um, provides service ABC, but this Kubernetes cluster here should only see B and C. So we can um, change the catalog, we can modify the catalog of the service broker, on the way to the Kubernetes cluster. Um, the nice um, thing about this approach is that we are using the Open Service Broker, open service broker API, and we basically don't need to change anything. Right? So we don't need to change anything in Cloud Foundry. We don't need to change anything in the service couple of, of Kubernetes. It's the, still the same API. All the native tools are still working. All user experience is the same. All, no application has to change. It just works. It's the, same, the same is true for the service broker. Um, we have a lot of service brokers, and they probably don't need to change at all, because it's the same protocol. There are, of course, a few exceptions. There are service brokers that are specifically um, built for Cloud Foundry or for Kubernetes. Uh, those, of course, have to adapt a bit. But also, this is something that we can call, uh, control via policies. For example, if a service broker tells us it only works really with Kubernetes, we only register it at a Kubernetes cluster, not in Cloud Foundry, and vice versa. Uh, we also get some other nice features from this architecture. We can uh, provide functionalities that span uh, uh, platforms. Uh, one of the most important ones is instance sharing across platforms. So one of the scenarios is uh, you create a database for a Cloud Foundry application, and a year later, you, ne you need the same database uh, in a Kubernetes cluster. This is something that we can do with a service manager. 
transparently to the, uh, to the platforms. Neither Cloud Foundry nor Kubernetes will, will actually uh, identify this as something hostile or different. Um, this is completely built on the Open Service Broker API. We know that we are not the only one having this, uh, this issue, uh, because there are other providers that have a lot of platforms and a lot of services. Um, and so right from the beginning, we started the uh, Service Manager project as an open, so uh, open source project. Um, the project is called Periply. You can find it on GitHub. Um, so Periply is basically the framework for the Service Manager. Um, what we are doing basically is adding plugins to it. So there's a plugin framework um, that lets you extend this, uh, the service manager framework of Periply, and that, that's what we're doing at SAP. So we are not forking our own project and uh, then changing it to fill with, with, with it. What we are doing is we are building plugins for it. And those plugins then implement things like the policies I talked about, because policies like which broker should be registered where is something that's really specific um, uh, to the environment. This is not some, something that you can build in an open source project uh, with, a, with a set of uh, simple rules. So this is really, they really need some coding and maybe also talking back to, um, to the platform itself. So um, what we are doing is we are, we are taking this, adding uh, plugins to it at SAP and using it at SAP. Um, I now want to show you um, a little demo. Uh, I will register a service broker at the service manager, and this service manager has a Cloud Foundry and a Kubernetes cluster attached to it. Um, it's only two platforms here, but you can imagine the service manager handles hundreds of platforms, right? Um, all I'm going to show you is, uh, is the open source. Uh, code here, so everything I'm doing here on stage, you can uh, do yourself by just taking what's on the uh, on the GitHub uh, project and, and set it up yourself. Um, there's no SAP specific code in this demo, so it's a live demo. So let's see what goes wrong. So basically, I have three windows here. And it's already shifted. So um, three windows here. At the top, I have the service manager window where I run service manager commands. There's a command line tool that I'm going to use. Uh, and this red window here, I have a Cloud Foundry. I use the Cloud Foundry command line tool. And down here, I use the service catalog command line tool. So let's see. As I said, I've registered uh, two platforms um, at the service manager that you can see here. And there are no brokers registered at the moment. So it's a pretty empty system. Uh, so let's look at Cloud Foundry. Yeah, yeah, there are so a few brokers are registered here, but nothing really of interest for this demo. Let's try the same on Kubernetes. No brokers registered here. So now register one. I have a little currency converter service that, well, converts currencies um, that I use for the demo. So let's see. Yes, uh, it has been registered. I list the brokers here. Let's see. You can see this now on uh, Cloud Foundry. Yes, we can. So you see here, there's a node broker that starts with SM proxy. That's a service manager proxy that um, takes the role of the original broker. And we should see something similar now on Kubernetes, yes, it's, it's over here. So let's use it. So let's go to the marketplace. Now we have our currency converter service here. Um, let's create an instance, uh, create a service key. Here we are, there's a URL, password, and a username. Uh, let's use it. OK, good, it's, it's working. So let's try the same with the, with the Kubernetes. Here's our, um, here's our um, service. Let's create an instance of that. Uh, let's create a binding. Of course, it's on live demo, and it doesn't work. Um, but um, yeah, you, you can imagine that basically the same thing works, <laughs> works on Kubernetes as well. Um, 
I, I was able to create an instance so the communication between the service catalog in Kubernetes and the, the actual broker did work, but for some reason the binding didn't work. I don't know. Um, I have a session about the service manager uh, later this afternoon, um, and I will retry this demo. Um, <laughs> So if you want to know more about the service manager, more details, and what we actually do at SAP with it, and what kind of plugins we, um, uh, we write, and things like that, um, I will show you there. Thank you. <laughs>